back at WrestleCon WrestleMania weekend here on the Hannibal TV, and this is uh, unusual for me because this is, used to be my boss. He used to be the one that uh, uh, told me what to do, and uh, you know him as the voice of WCW Monday Nitro, WCW Thunder. Heck, every WCW they had to work every WCW program. Yeah, that's, that's Saturday right, night, yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. but uh, Tony Schiavone, welcome. You have a bit of a resurgence here with a podcast. Tell us about it. Uh, David, good to see you, man. Great it's been a long time. Yeah, yeah, you haven't aged a bit. <laughs> yeah, we all have. Hey, so the podcast is a part of MLW Radio. It's called WHW, What Happened When. We go back and take a look at individual matches, individual pay-per-views at WCW with Conrad Thompson, who's really the you know, the brains behind all this. I just sit down and talk. So it's been tremendous. It really has. And uh, we're really excited about it. Uh, we sell T-shirts. Uh, it's turned my life around, really. And uh, uh, my only daughter is going to get married next year. I need all the freaking money I can get. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I know at the end. I know personally at the end of WCW, you were uh, you're pretty wiped out. You were oh, doing yeah. all the shows. Plus, a lot of people don't know you were executive producer to, to yeah. a lot of those shows. So uh, you sort of went off the, the, the in a different direction and didn't go back to wrestling. Um, what brought you back? Conrad brought me back. He sent me a long email uh, in January, right at the first of the year. And he had everything planned out about how much money we could make, what we could do, and he wanted me to get back in wrestling. And I told Lois, you know Lois, I know Lois. <laughs> tells everybody, tell I Lois I said, huh? I will. Uh, I, and I told Lois, I said, what the heck? Let's give it a shot. And we did. And uh, so now we're back into full time. It got me here at WrestleCon, uh, and I'm gonna make some other appearances. I really miss people like you, my friends in the business. I really do. Uh, and obviously, it's great connecting with the fans here. Let me ask you a question, because uh, we were just talking to Bill DeMott a little while ago, and he said that uh, a lot of the bad memories erase over time. Yeah. Uh, what, what are the good memories you have back thinking of WCW and the Monday Night Wars? Well, I, I tell you, a lot of them with the good memories I had were a lot of the cities and towns that we traveled in. If I go back and think, and you'll remember this, David, we were so fortunate to be able to work Disney World all those years and go backstage and, and do that. Those were some great times, and that's what I remember. The fans say, do you remember this match? Do you remember this match? Not really. It all kind of, you know, uh, kind of melds together. But I remember the people. I remember the good times that we had. And uh, we were very fortunate back then in the 90s to be as popular as we were and, and be able to work with some pretty good people. Now, we work with some bad people too, and you know their names, but still, mostly great people we work with. Man, you want, care to mention any names? I would not. I'm not going to do that. But you can tune into my podcast, and I won't mention all the names. No, I'm okay. kidding. Uh, I, I've heard, I, have, I haven't had a chance to listen yet, but uh, I've heard that you're bringing Klondike Bill back as the national name. Do you have any uh, Klondike Bill stories you haven't told yet? I think I've told every story that I know. Now, did you tell the story about when he uh, doing the money grab on the the baseball? I haven't told that one. Will you tell it to us? Yes, I'll tell it to you. Uh, when it, this was like 1983, and we had I was working with the baseball team, and they had a money grab where they brought six people out on the field to grab play money, and they could cash in for real money. Klondike, instead of littering the uh, field with money, just dumped it, boom, right on top of the mound. <laughs> Four or five people went in, had these big band lawn shirts, and they got all this money. One person won like $7,500 that night. The baseball team had to cut, had to shut down concession stands, <laughs> had to lay off people because of all that money. And Bill said, hey, I, I, I wasn't told what to do. I wasn't told to dump it on the on the, on the the top of the mound. I, I, I just did what I thought was natural. I said, well, great job, Bill. Well, about 10 people are unemployed right now because of you. I love that story. Yeah. It never gets old. I have one last question, then I'll sure. let you go. Was I a great employee? Yeah, you were one of the best, David. One of the best. You were a great suck up. You always I was took, a good suck up. Yeah, you always. I took, admitted that when yeah. I did a shoot video for okay. the Hannibal TV that I was a suck up. Yeah, well, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. It always strokes the ego. Uh, but you were a great guy. I do need to say this: after we went down, I did work for you, uh, doing tattoos at uh, at the zoo in Atlanta, and I appreciated all that. And uh, you're a longtime close personal friend of mine. I say, and I, I say the same thing. Uh, what happened when? What and uh, be sure to check that out. I'm going to start listening. I'll have to make some time. Yeah. Life is busy, but I'm going to make some time. You guys be sure to check it out. And don't forget to subscribe to the Hannibal TV for instant updates of interviews like this with the one and only Tony Schiavone.